Big 21 was in service between, or constructed between 1966 and 1984. The primary mission of the MiG-21 was as an aerial interceptor. In other words, they'd go up and, and look for uh, opposing aircraft. The primary advantages to the MiG-21 were rate of climb, speed, and armament. Um, it was an interceptor, so it did have some faults, but those were the primary advantages of those planes over others. The Delta Wing fighter as an interceptor was very ineffective. Um, the turn radius was not real good. And because of the distri distribution of the fuel tanks inside the aircraft, the fuel tank was ahead of the center of balance of the aircraft. As you used fuel, it was changing the center of the balance of the aircraft until it became, at some point, unstable and difficult to fly. The Soviets were never particularly concerned with the creature comforts of their pilots. But it was like an Air Force, an American Air Force pilot getting the first F-16. It was the newest thing on the block. So everybody wanted it. The problem was the instability and another number of other flaws, but basically half of the 680 MiG-21s that were made were lost in crashes and accidents. There were actually 60 countries that flew the MiG-21. Some of them are still flying. The basic advantage for them was the cost of the aircraft. The MiG-21 was a very cheap aircraft which is true of most of the Soviet fighter aircraft at the, of that era. The biggest unreliability was the location of the fuel tanks inside the airplane. As you move, as you use fuel, you're moving the center of gravity back until the airplane becomes unstable. And because the aircraft are pressurized by the intake of the engine, if I do a climbing turn with less than half a tank of gas, it basically shuts the gas off to the engine, shuts your engine off. Initially, in the 1970s, I was with a system called Nike Hercules. The Nike Hercules system was what they called HIMAD, High Altitude Air Defense. So we weren't talking about airplanes coming in in the grass. We were talking things up to 1,000 feet, or 100,000 feet, and out to 100 miles. And we were responsible for theater air defense, not point air defense. We had uh, the Hawk and the Chaparral Vulcan and the Stinger, or Red Eye at that time, to protect the airfields. So we had a sector of airspace, basically either pointed east or northeast toward east, east uh, Germany, that our, was our responsibility. We, we could shoot down either individual fighters or because Nike, Nike Hercules was nuclear capable, we could take out entire bomber formations. Um, the, the issue we had was jamming. It was all radar based. So if they could jam or destroy our radar, that was going to be an issue for us. The goal in getting the MiG-21 and a number of other foreign airplanes was to show the differences between what Warsaw Pact aircraft looked like for that period of time and what our aircraft looked like in that same period of time. We were contacted a number of years ago by the Air Force Museum at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base with the fact that they had a MiG-21 that they wished to loan out to another museum on a permanent basis. Um, so that basically it came from the Air Force Museum. Right? Obstacles for all these airplanes, of the 59 airplanes we have, only three were flyable when they got here. One of our members owns a trucking company and has flatbed trucks. So the disassembly process requires us to make the parts small enough that they can fit in on a flatbed truck and can be transportable without wide loads. So basically they took the tail structure off, took the wings off, and mounted the fuselage on the truck, went back down, picked up the wings and the tail structure, brought it back here and reassembled it here at the museum. So the obstacles for us were getting to Wright-Patterson Airport, disassembling a foreign airplane, which are all metric screws and bolts, putting it on a truck and bringing it back here to be reassembled. To restore it to display condition and, and show again the differences between Warsaw Pact aircraft mm -hmm. and American. Um, making sure the tail structure fit back over the engine. We don't have 
you know, sophisticated lifting equipment. So we basically had a crane that we own out here to get those parts back in place. And same thing for the wings. We have some very clever volunteers here. And you can see from the restoration building what, they, what they're capable of doing. They basically overcome any challenges.